I must yet help, said Nicobobinus to himself, and he began groping around in the blackness to find another way out. When he found it, however, his heart sank. The only exit appeared to be a narrow gap down by the floor, no more than a foot high. I can't squirm through that in the pitch dark. But at that very moment, heard Rose's cheerful voice saying, You can do it. Nicobobinus span around and there to his immense surprise was no, nothing. No Rosie, no anybody. But I don't know if it leads anywhere, he said to the voice in his head, and it's such a tight squeeze, I might get stuck. He didn't hear Rosie's voice again, but he knew what that what it would have said, and that was how he found himself wriggling down a narrow passageway of stone in the pitch black. He squirmed and he wriggled there in the black for a long, long time, and the tunnel got narrower until he came came hardly inch along it i'm going back he said to himself but he didn't he just kept wriggling and squirming until suddenly he found he could stand up he took a pace forward and immediately fell over steps leading up ow he said although what he really meant was thank goodness he began to climb and he was still climbing some minutes later. It must be a tower, he thought, or the grandest house in Venice. But at that very moment, he saw a crack of light. He stretched out his hand, found himself touching a catch that clicked softly in the dark. A panel suddenly slid open and Nicobobinus stepped, stepped through into the most amazing room he'd ever seen.